M17 has been dropped from MMDVM support. It's no longer included in WPSD, and there's been some turmoil about it. Check this out. I actually got this in email, and then about the same day, this was maybe three days ago at the time of this recording, about the same day I start getting emails from a bunch of you guys sending me information about what they, they're doing. One guy sent me an article that uh, Jerry from Connect Systems had written about uh, them trying to convince Jonathan Naylor, the main guy in charge of MMDVM, that he's the one who wants to drop it. And uh, WPSD is what Bridgecom puts on their hotspots, and that's no longer including MMDVM, but that's outside of Bridgecom's control. That's up to the WPSD developers. And if it wasn't uh, some kind of turmoil, then it wouldn't be ham radio. So here's an article. This came across my news story feed right about the time that everyone started sending me emails about it. MMDVM, a popular software and hardware project that powers many amateur radio hotspots, has announced the intention to drop M17 digital voice and data protocol as a supported mode. M17 is the newest mode. I've had the M17 guys on this channel a couple of times, interviewed them at a couple of ham fests. It's a open source digital voice mode built on Codec 2, which is an open source codec. I'm going to talk about open source here in a little bit. I think open source is both good and bad. What do I mean by that? Stay tuned. Most of your other digital voice protocols, DSTAR, DMR, System Fusion, P25, and these, rely on a protocol called either AMBE, AMBE, or some of the older ones are IMBE. Both of these protocols are owned by a company called DVSI, and they make a chip that they will license to anyone. You just have to buy it from DVSI. That's why there's so many Chinese manufacturers making DMR radios, because you just purchase a license from DVSI, put the chip in your radio, and you're good. M17 and Kodak, there's a lot more to it than that. I'm, I'm giving a very high-level overview here. M17 was the first one to not use a DVSI chip, not use an AMBI chip. They're using their own Kodak 2, which is an open-source digital voice codec, and it's been an open-source project up until now, Let's keep reading. Inclusion of M17 among the supported modes of MMDVM project has been a major benefit to the current rate of adoption of M17. The first commercial radio supporting M17 shipped in the second half of 2024. That is the CS7000 M17, which I did a live stream about the CS7000 M17, which is actually sitting right here. So that was the first uh, commercial radio being sold with M17 adopted. The M17 project is an open source digital voice protocol that is positioned as an alternative digital modes that require the use of proprietary encoders such as the DVSI chip, AMB, and IMBE codecs. MMDVN is also an open source project that enables amateur radio hotspots to support multiple digital voice protocols, including DSTAR, DMR, YSF, P25, NXDN, and POXSAG. Okay, so if we click on this announced link right here, it brings us to a groups.io list. And this is a public message. I don't know if I'm even a member of this list, but it is in the open DV list. And this is Jonathan Naylor. I met Jonathan at the, I think, Hamvention two or three years ago. It might've been Hamcation, one of them. I met him for the first time at Hamcation. And then later that year, maybe the next year at Hamvention, did an interview with him. Nice guy. Very, very knowledgeable in the world of MMDVM since it is kind of his project. So this is what he has to say. This is an open forum. This is not a private letter or anything like that. And so I'm, I'm reading public information here. It is with great regret and a certain amount of relief that I have removed M17 from MMDVM. I have two sets of issues with M17, administrative and technical. Firstly, the administrative side of M17 is very worrying, and even more so in recent months. A couple of years ago, M17 received $478,900 in grants from ARDC. Yes, I had Steve and, and Ed, who are Americans, because a lot of the M17 stuff is being done out of Sweden. I had Steve and Ed, who were their American counterparts, on the live stream two or three times to talk about M17. And I am i don't believe Steve and Ed are with that project anymore. Don't know why. Not going to speculate. Not sure what happened there. But during that time was when ARDC had given them grant money to fund this nonprofit open source project. Received $478,900 in grants from ARDC to develop in 17. I feel very much that ARDC should take a closer look at how the money was spent. Okay, these are his words, not mine. The new M17 Foundation isn't much better. A number of the M17 stalwarts were excluded from it when it was formed. I don't know what he's talking about here. I'm just, I'm just reading this text. 
Rather, more sadly, the M17 Foundation make no mention of a number of people or organizations that had helped them to get to where they were now. Sounds like he wasn't acknowledged and he's upset about it, but I don't know. I don't know the backstory. Okay. This is a particularly troubling as it is rewriting of history and not appointing praise where it is due. A lot of people put a lot of time and effort in M17, and to not get their due is dishonest of the M17 team. Okay, I'm going to take... I'm going to take Jonathan at his word here and say that this is all correct, and I agree with him if it is. Again, I don't have any inside knowledge here. I'm just reading it open for him. An example uh, of this is the fact that only one commercial entity has put their money where their mouth is, and that is Jerry of Connect Systems. Okay, we talked about him a minute ago. However, his contribution to the project has been belittled online by the M17, as has mine. Despite it being the only way to get a commercial M17 radio, he should be praised not dismissed out of hand okay i don't know what he's talking about there either either if somebody has a link to these forums and articles that he's talking about where this has happened please send it to me i don't i don't i don't i haven't seen that myself i don't browse forums much these days except for if it's on reddit looking for stuff to talk about new videos but <laughs> here we go i have heard rumors that m17 foundation is looking at charging commercial entities a royalty to include m17 in their equipment and to use their logo this is not in the spirit of open source and has not been the route followed by MMDVM. Now, I heard that rumor about two months ago, maybe three months ago, something like that. I heard that rumor and I'm like, okay, you hear a lot of stuff. I mean, I get emails from people about all kinds of stuff. People are excited about new stuff. People are pissed off about something that happened or people are dismayed or frustrated or whatever. I get all kinds of emails about all kinds of things. Generally speaking, most of it is noise. Some of it is very good information, and I'll you'll usually end up seeing me make videos on that. So I actually heard this rumor a few months ago, and I didn't really put much thought into it or much effort into I didn't put much faith in it because I'm like, well, okay. If they are charging, my understanding is ARDC only gives money to nonprofits which M17 was. M17 Foundation was a nonprofit. As far as I know, they still are. Maybe that's changed. I don't know. But if you are a for-profit business, ARDC will not grant you money. I know this firsthand because I asked them for a grant because I do a lot of teaching on my channel, and they're like, well, you make a profit, so we can't grant you money. I'm like, okay, that's fair. I didn't hold any begrudges against them because of that. Okay, this is their business model. This is how they do things. They were actually quite polite to me, and they said, hey, we really like what you're doing, but we can't give you any money because you're a for-profit business. I'm like, yes, I am. Yes, that's true. I, I'm not a nonprofit. I never claimed to be a nonprofit, so I get it. So in that regard, if M17 is going to start charging for their logo to feature their logo almost like a brand ad, almost like a royalty, to put their open source codec on a commercial radio and sell it, that's not nonprofit anymore. I'm going to link this article below, and I'm going to read more of it to you. But the first thing I'll say, if you want to get involved in this hap hap happy realm of amateur radio, or you want to get an upgraded license, check out Ham Radio Prep. You can save a 20% discount. Here's, a, here's an example of me being a for-profit business. You can save a 20% discount off of all of Ham Radio Prep's courses with the coupon code of Jason20. Ham Radio Prep has helped get hundreds, tens of thousands, really, people with their new Ham Radio license or Ham Radio license upgrade over the last several years. They are a valuable source in the community, but they are for-profit business also. So they're not going to get an ARDC grant, and that's okay. That's okay. That's why you buy their product and learn your stuff and get your upgrade and go on. Save a discount at Ham Radio Prep with the coupon code of Jason20. This goes on to say, he said he had two points. So the first one was that. The second one, second, secondly, technical. When, when started, M17 was proudly created by people who said that they brought fresh thinking to digital voice. I would say that it characterized more by a combination of arrogance and stupidity. <laughs> Again. Not my words. I'm reading Jonathan's words here, and this is on an open forum, not to a private letter he sent to me. Because I know I'm going to get comments saying, dude, you read that out loud? No, no, no. He wrote it out loud, and I'm just rereading it. Okay, here we go. <laughs> Maybe I'll contact him and say, dude, you want to do an interview about this? The fact that none of them have ever operated digital voice radio, let alone studied the DV mode, was seen as positive. Really? I didn't know that. None of them ever operated a digital voice radio? Come on. One of the key members designed it 
like a packet radio system where each block or packet of information needed to be received perfectly. So no forward error correction. Is that what that means? This is not a useful att attribute to have. I, I would agree. As originally designed, the synchronization patterns were literally one bit different from one another, which is useless in an environment where signals are routinely corrupted to a greater or lesser extent. Over the first six months of my involvement, I managed to get them to change the synchronization vectors to something more reasonable and got them to add a CAN, a channel access number, to allow for some sort of channel sharing between the M17 systems. I also added things we take for granted in other DV modes like embedded GPS data, short text messages. These both run in parallel to the audio like D-Star or other DV modes. There were still five big issues. A networking protocol designed before the RF protocol is established included ideas that didn't make sense in later development. Very weak end of a message indicator. Inclusion of optional strong encryption. This is against regulations in most countries. shouldn't even be thought about. That's true. If you're going to design a digital voice mode for amateur radio like System Fusion and D-Star were, DMR was not. That's why DMR includes encryption. Because DMR and P25 both are commercial protocols that we adopted as amateur radio operators. Now, sometimes I'll get people, well, since it wasn't made, since it wasn't made for amateur radio, I'm not going to use DMR. <laughs> well, guess what? I don't know if you've ever heard of a little mode called Continuous Wave CW or a protocol called Morse Code. But let me let you in on a little secret. None of that was made for amateur radio. AM and FM voice transmissions were not made for amateur radio. RIDI was not originally made for amateur radio. FT8 was. So if you want to drop DMR and non -co and commercial modes that were adopted by amateur radio simply because they weren't made for amateur radio, I hope that you only operate PSK31, JT65, FT8, and these kinds of protocols on HF because everything else that's on there pretty much was not made for amateur radio. That's a stupid argument. I'm sorry. If I offended someone by saying that, I apologize. It's a stupid argument to say that DMR and P25 are, shouldn't be an amateur radio because they weren't made for amateur radio. Okay, but leaving that, I, I got a, that's a bit of a tangent. I got on a bit of a tangent there. Okay, but Jonathan is correct. He says that inclusion of optional strong encryption. This is against regulations in most countries. Shouldn't even be thought about. Oddly enough, encrypted M17 wouldn't pass through an MMDVM based repeater. So the reason that DMR and P25 include encryption is because they're commercial, but we're not really supposed to be using them in amateur radio on amateur radio frequencies. Now, I know some people are going to... I, I suspect some people are coming along and comments, well, we use encryption all the time. Nobody ever says anything. Well, good for you. Good for you. Uh, congratulations on not being able to read your license protocols, but good, good for you. Okay. Nevertheless, encryption at this point in time is not really supposed to be used by amateur radio operators on amateur radio frequencies. You want to use encryption, get a commercial radio. Get a commercial frequency you can use that on. So he's correct. Inclusion of optional strong encryption, why would you even put that in M17 if you're actually making it for amateur radio users and, and the amateur radio community as a whole? The wrong type of FCC applied badly. That FEC forward error correction is what that is. So a few other things in here in this article, and he says... He signs off with, does anyone want to buy a CS7000 M17? I've got one. I've got one sitting right here. I'm not going to, I don't want to, it's behind a bunch of radios. I'm going to knock everything off my desk if it try, I try to pull it out. But, hey, what do you guys think about this? Are you disappointed? I am disappointed. Let's take the artic, this article at face value. Okay, let's assume for the moment, for the sake of this statement I'm about to make, that everything said in this article is true. It's disappointing that a group who started out as open source and supportive of amateur radio and using a codec like Codec 2, which is open source, and got an ARDC grant as an open source nonprofit entity is now shifting gears and trying to charge you for and do encryption with this this protocol, this M17 protocol. If there's more, I'm sure there's more to the story. I, I have no doubt there's more to the story, okay? But if... This is true. Again, let's just take this at face value for the sake of this argument. Then, yeah, this is disappointing. And I'm probably not going to be interested in using M17 anymore myself. Not that I use it a lot anyway. I was looking forward to it. I was looking forward to getting it in more commercial radios and using it that way. I was happy about the fact that WPSD, which is upgraded version of Pi Star, 
included it, you get a new uh, hotspot from Bridgecom, or you get a new hotspot, any any hotspot that runs WPSD. M17 is now, or, or it was, an included voice protocol, so it was easy to talk on M17 and get into the get into the system if you had a radio for it. Um, you know, hats off to Jerry at Connect Systems for actually creating a commercial radio. And I don't know. I don't know where that's going to go. So we'll see. What do you guys think about this? Whose side are you on? Do you think you're, you agree with M17? Or do you agree with, uh, with Jonathan? Because I know a couple people are saying that this is, this is immature of Jonathan to act this way. This is childish. We need to put this back in. And I'm like, well, maybe. Maybe you're right. Maybe you're right. Maybe you're right. But here's something I want to close with this. And no one is going to like what I... <laughs> well, a lot of people. A lot of people are not going to like what I have to say. This is what you get with an open source project. Now, that obvious that MMDVM is an open source project, and it's still going very strong. So obviously, open source projects can work. But I have seen many times, many projects fall flat on their face two or three or five or six years into the project. Open source. It's all open source. It's all open source. It's open source. Great. Wonderful. Right up until the point where the developers and the supporters and the guys in charge of it get kind of sick and tired of everyone complaining about it and just basically drop the project and say, nope, we're not going to do this anymore. We're tired of working on it 20 to 25 hours a week and not being paid for it. I got other things to do with my time, like spend time with family or do my real job, which actually puts food on the table for my family. So, And who can blame them? I don't blame them at all. I like the idea of open source, but I think the developers and the administrators and the project leaders and the, the, the beta testers and these people who put all of this time into it, I don't think they get proper recognition. I don't think they get proper recognition. And a lot of times, and I've seen it before, I could, I could name three open source projects right now that I've seen fall flat on their face in the last 10 years. I'm not going to do that because I'm not trying to I'm not trying to throw anyone under the bus. I'm not trying to talk about that, but maybe I'll just maybe I can make a different video. Maybe I can make a new video and say, "Hey, here's what I think you should do with open source. Let's discuss it." I don't know. They're wanting to charge for this protocol now. Why? It's based on an open source codec, digital voice codec. They're not implementing it correctly according to Jonathan anyway. So I don't know. So it's is it going to be is it now going to be a for-profit project? that they charge for and try to build their own radios for, and they're going to become another another Yezu or another Kenwood, which is okay. That's okay. You want to build a radio and charge for it? There's nothing wrong with that. But don't claim you're going to be open source if you're going to do that also. That's my opinion. A lot more to it than that. I could talk for a little bit longer, but there's a, there's a mud dauber in my ham shack, so I'm going to sign off, guys. 73, I'd really want to know what your comments are. Put a comment in the video below. Catch you next time.